Welcome to the show and on Dano on Fire today we are checking out Life's Good Kitchen. This is a brand new location. If you have not been here, this is our first time here as well. Super excited to be here. Now talking about Life is Good, I have somebody who is doing something amazing. Um, he's actually Calvin, uh, one of those odd Sri Lankan names I think, but it was easier when he went to London. He is uh, even producer plus a photographer. And he photographs very basic people like CK and just just normal people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, life. Yeah, that's just 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 yeah. So how are they doing? Like these people like CK and yeah. So I I, I shoot mostly like Paul Smith campaigns. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know Paul. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so they're fashion campaigns. So usually like for WWDs and Women Wear Daily art news and there's mostly editorials, fashion films, Naked Wolf, that's a, one of the... Naked Wolf? Wolf. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nothing is naked about that, right? Uh, I mean, you can wear the shoes naked in a sense if you want to. Ah, right, right. It's, a, a, shoe. Shoe. it's a shoe brand. It's okay. a shoe. Right. Got to be excited there. <laughs> anyway, so um, coming to not about the Naked Wolf part, just the Naked part. Anyway, I just wanted to know, so you, you, you are a Sri Lankan, you were living here? Yes, I was born here. Yeah. Where were you studying? Uh, I went to Kandy in Dharmaraja's College, in Kandy. So ah. I'm from Kandy, yeah. You have another Kandy in here? Yeah, I know. Yeah, she's more rural. <laughs> Shout out to Dima. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's on the team with us. Uh, so, uh, from there, how did you end up going to London? So, I went back in like probably like now 20 years ago to London and obviously settled myself there and I start studying there and I get into like a whole system of like fashion scene and I start my BA in fashion photography and my MA in fashion filmmaking. So that's sort of a vibe then that sort of a leads into a like a more freelance work and editorial work then getting involved with like lobby in Sri Lanka and other sort of a, like a startup ventures that end up with becoming um, yeah still still a startup stage <laughs> Brilliant. so my, my question is I met him through Lovi and uh, they sort of introduced him as a creative director yes um, so when you came abro came across this brand that is fundamentally selling sarongs yes what was it, what was your thought about it I mean I, I thought like it's, it's a brilliant marketing like brilliant piece unique like you know because like as the technology advanced, like 15, 20 years ago, like we didn't need a pocket in a sarong because no one was carrying, like my dad used to have this Motorola thing, like yeah. you need a bag. That was a weapon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Not so, a um, so that's sort of like, um, like the technology and we need this, this become like your, your phone, your, um, your TV, your laptop and your life. Like Correct. people, to, so, so the lobby, I think they, they found this niche that you can put it in your pocket. Mm. And I, I think that's where the start, I, I was really excited. So how did you connect with the lobby? So um, I, um, I done some movies, like um, I done fashion films. Um, where one of the fashion films, the award winning fashion film I done called uh, Osaria. So um, Asanka sort of got in touch with me on a very early stage. Where, like, hey, you done like Osaria, I do sarongs. Um, can we like, like, Thank you. 
because I, I was essentially doing lots of research on like on my BA like university level how the Sri Lankan culture how I was the handloom being made what is these colors all about so that's where I came on board with become friend of Asanka first and Asanka asked me do you want to sort of be a part of Lovi then yeah so we are just uh, making Lovi there you go super <laughs> now uh, my question is uh, in London getting all these cool things going it's not an easy task especially when you're brown when you're trying to penetrate into a majority white market yeah. there how was that i mean it's i i, I always take it in a positive approach okay. right so uh, in, in a way i see it as an uh, opportunity hmm. because i i am like there's not many brown fashion photographers if you google my name and you'll see come out as like most of the people are non-brown and mm. there's a couple of other ethnic so it's, yeah I, in a way i am a, I'm a minority in a in a other way it i use it as my advantage right so in a way like they remember me more so when i when they work with me like oh that's the guy i work with mm. right because and, you tend to stand out yeah, good or bad yeah and also yeah. i'm from candy and we, we are and also we are from sri lanka we are chilled and we hug and say hello to people we are we are nicer people we mm. have like a good gesture and we go to someone's house we take a bottle of wine yeah. and or something yeah something yeah. so can't go shaky shaky no yeah so that's i think i think that kind of a work into advantage for me rather than like so then like universities and everyone's used me as ambassador because i'm like ethnic minority um and and a, and, a, and a ethnic like immigrant sri lankan mm. uh, so i'm british sri lankan now so they 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 use me as a like okay well you know anyone can come from a different country and and claim a piece of uh, london is a diverse place mm. it's a, it's a good way yeah uh, how is it work with paul smith yeah, Paul Smith is really good. Uh, I mean, he's a legend. So, like, the guy who start making um, essentially shirts and selling in on the Sunday market is become an entre like entrepreneur and says make an enterprise. Oh. He's, uh, and he's a giant. So it's the sitting down with him and listening to his like vision uh, and vision and uh, it's amazing. And he, he's absolutely legend and such a nice person to work with and uh, such a funny character yeah well it's amazing um i've always loved paul smith um, products they're so vibrant and so colorful so it makes it so much more nicer we're getting into a break to, uh, break when we do come back we'll speak more with our own kelvin uh, on the other side just to Back to the show, it's Dano on Fire. We're checking out the all new Life's Good Kitchen. It's really sweet, I love this place. Now, uh, now we've spoken about your involvement in fashion. Um, have you ever decided this might not be the trade for me? I need to move. Um, have you ever thought of that? No, not really. Like, like I thought, like, I like the production, fashion, photography, the colors, the people. Um, it's, I think it's very lively and it gives some sort of a joy to people. Who is the biggest name you have photographed? Ooh, uh, biggest name I photographed probably a woman called Zandra Rhodes. And she make um, all the prints for Valentino. Right. And she done all the clothes for Diana, Michael Jackson, uh, f um, Queen. And so she is... Um, she has dressed everyone who is dead. Most of the people. <laughs> <laughs> All three are dead. <laughs> but, but yeah, well, that's great. But she's alive. Yeah, but does she have a career now? <laughs> oh, no, she's yeah, she's she's one of the best. Um, she designer. can always say my clients are dead, but yeah, they were good clients. But, <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> yes. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, tell me in terms of. 
fashion, is it as big as it is in the US, in London? No, so US market is massive, so, so you're looking at like, UK is like 60 million plus, and UK is about 150 million people. And US market is very like, very different to fashion, so like UK market is very like, you still wear sort of a, like a nice clothes, the US market is all like a um, streetwear, street especially, and a, like, yeah, yeah, and they have like a huge segments of like baseball wear mm. and also like MBA stuff. Mm. And but also in um, the difference that I see in the English market is the fact that it's very stitched, it's very well yes. neatly cut, neatly stitched. Yes. That's the type of look that it goes. Do you think it's because of the old English that is still there in the people? Yes, yeah, yeah there's still people who wear satari and goes to the supermarket. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that you get that. But the younger generation's different yoga pants and hoodie top and that's as yeah. sneakers, that sort of thing. But it's still there, you know, like in UK, they, you st I mean, agency side, I work in a creative agency, they don't really mind whatever you wear. But if you work in a sh office they still expect you to put a tie yeah, and put a top well. yeah and yeah. come to work but you also produce events like Colum the london fashion week you work with the italian fashion week yes and the french fashion week yes that's it yes okay so how how does that work so i work in the mostly in the production side um so getting like mostly like getting the live shows live feeds working and we're oh. working with like making mini fashion films out of it as okay. well so especially for designers to show their collections we call it fashion film and we'll make a, like a uh, editorial which is a photograph so it's like a movie version of it mm. that sort of a thing i do and yeah i mean they massive productions uh, everyone works in their own segments right and, uh, and i do my segment and usually work in agencies and the, then I hand over my work to an agency and the agency hand over to the client. Um, it, it's a different process, uh, but it's good experience. Looking at the fashion week that we sort of witnessed, how would you compare ourselves to be on par with them? Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Colombo Fashion Week is, I think, is one of the best things happens in Colombo and things. It's live everything up give a bit of a spice to like, hey, like as a Sri Lankans, mm. like this is where we can be. And, and we, you know, because we know that we have the know-how in Sri Lanka because most of the like, if you look at the big brand, Arakrombie and Mark and Spencer, Zara, the, the stuff is made here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we know the know-how. It's the matter of now we are showing our, hey, we know the craft, we know the know-how, this is what we can produce. I think, um, and, and, and yourself, and all the sponsors, RJ, Kalamba Fashion Week, they're putting an enormous amount to give such opportunities for like emerging designers and the current brands. Uh, tell me, out of, out of all the productions you have done, what would you say is the hardest part? I think, I think the hardest part is like sometimes when, like when, the, when the clients get, into, get in touch with us uh, and we, we, we have that initial discussion, mm. I think the shooting part is the easiest part. So when you go to shoot, we have the mood boards, we have the shot list, we have you know, the colors, we have the stylist, we have the whole lot. And shoot day is less stressful. It's just building the story. You know, finding that authentic edge sample. No one done it, so we have to end up with going to a library or look for hours of hours of films and the footage mm. to find that authentic story which goes with the brand. And that is the hardest part. Come up with that sort of a narrative is the hardest part. But shooting parties afterwards is pretty simple. Brilliant. Um, now we have seen we have seen sort of fashion that has sort of been. Um, what can I say, quite old school in London if you take the royal family and what even the young royals are wearing, it's yeah. always very tailored and sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. But Kate seemed to be having a record for, the, for repeating the outfits and for repeating it so gracefully. Uh, how is the culture there in London about being seen in the same clothes over and over again? I, I think like it's given statements about consumers like not not over consuming fashion mm. so it's like sustainability as well mm. so like we need to be like you know be, be, be careful of like what's going to happen tomorrow to a world and if we start buying like we call it like a cheap fashion and recycling and all that recycle has to go into landfills and they are not biodegradable 
and, and, and we are pushing waste into a different countries because we don't have landfills in those countries. So I think that's, that's a carbon footprint goes up. Then all, because of all that, the temperature goes up. And, and we, 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 it's a dangerous territory. I think that's why people appreciate, like there's a vintage fashion is huge, like a second hand market. Mm. I think that's why people appreciate that if you wear the same thing again, even though if you have means to wear it, wearing the same thing again is, uh, I think, is a I think good statement to say like, to be in humble. You're more thinking about the environment more. You know, I, I, I try to give my lemongrass, is it lemon green? Lemon green, right? Yeah, yeah. That sarong to somebody, and they they, they were like, we "Want us blind?" Because well, I, I I look like a highlighter. No, I, I think I think this is the thing, right? When you asked me when you came to lobby, you asked me like, "I'm wearing this sarong, and what shoes I wear? Should I wear?" I said like, "Wear that green shoes." I think it, it, this is fashion, right? It, it's even it, landfills will reject me. I think. No, it's, it's amazing. I mean, Thank like, you. yeah. Nice. It's really good. Brilliant. You know, the food looks really good. Let's eat. Let's eat. When we do come back, we'll speak more about uh, what, what we are doing as uh, merging international and local fashion when we do come back on the other side. Back to the show. It's our final segment with you on Down One Fire, and uh, this is our favorite sweet. I think we should not wait for the segment yeah. to finish. Just okay. eat. Let's do it. Yeah, let's eat, 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 and talk. Now, when you went from Sri Lanka to UK, you would have had big dreams. Mm -hmm. Do you feel you have accomplished it all? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, Great. like, I, I, I never had a dream to become a, um, a fashion photographer and be in that segment of a limelight. Um, I always thought I'd be in the back of the camera and, you know, as a humble Sri Lankan, you go there and you think like, oh, if I have a half decent job, yeah. if I get a monthly salary, if I end up with working in a, somewhere like a supermarket or what's not. Yeah, uh, to make a comfortable living. Living. So, um, well, then, you know, one thing leads to another and uh, you, you start, you know, going down on the rabbit hole. Mm. <laughs> do you think, um, do you think if you were in Sri Lanka, you would have been able to do this? Uh, I think so. I, I, I often actually think, like, if I was in Sri Lanka, I would probably have done much better. Really? Yeah. Having, having done the same thing in London, mm. um, most of the stuff I have to like, had like barriers, uh, which wouldn't have in Sri Lanka. And I think I would have more access in Sri Lanka, mm. but would be able to do more creative stuff. And I think I would have, uh, I always think like I would have done much better in Sri Lanka. And, and it's one of my sort of, uh, uh, it's like, it's not a regret, but I just often think like I would have been done much mm. better. Yeah, I know. Oh uh, well, if you have, if you can make it here, it's a small pond. If you yeah. can too. Yeah. Shine a bit brighter. Yeah, and there's so many successful people here. I mean, mm. like you can name it, like from Camera LK. What's his name? I can't remember his Afanko. name. Yeah, uh, yeah, and um, and to Dulit from Kapruka to Harusha from Hudan Vega, yeah. Asanka Hudan Lovi. You, you, you know, there's so many entrepreneurs here. Mm. These all brands that were created by us for us yeah. and it has reached a global stand. Yeah, yeah. Now you would have seen L Lovi being born in London. Yes. And what do people say when they see it? Well they, they like because it's really authentic and it's yeah. really different right and it symbolize Sri Lanka and your heritage. Right? I think that's the most important thing right. So you look at other other brand like Gucci, Prada so they symbolize like Italian heritage and you know it that's that's a symbol mm. so with Lovi we're trying to get something unique and and something ours mm. and you know especially like how we wear stuff our you know crowns and our heritage our sarongs and that's our color palette we have such a rich color palette mm. and such a, such a rich food palette and knowing that we can bring all of those onto these modern day garments is a great thing yeah of course yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me for those Sri Lankans, for those who are young, thinking about what they should do in life, what would you tell them? 
Like, how do you stick to a dream and sort of make it a reality? Uh, I, I think the w one advice I can give to you is like, look, look what is needed in the world, hmm. right? And then make your sort of uh, dreams and align with it, right? Don't try to say like, I wanted to become a doctor, engineer, this and other. Have a look at like in uh, in the current market segment, what is the need, what are the like jobs which is available which you can do, and then obviously align your dreams. I mean, like you know, if you th th there's nothing called a bad job, hmm. right? It's like in Sri Lanka, and, yeah. and also it's how you see it. Well, success is uh, sub subjective, hmm. right? It's nothing called a bad job, and just because you have more money doesn't make you more successful in life. Yeah, That's it makes you more comfortable. That's uh, it. Yeah. In a yeah. way, yeah. yeah, money buys comfort, not necessary happiness. Yeah, and success, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Accomplishment is something very, very different. Yes. Yeah. Different. Uh, you would have seen, um, do you feel that we, we have a space for new brands to come in more in fashion here? Yeah. Oh. I mean, Sri Lanka is like you, the craft is cheaper, the labor is cheaper, and we manufacture most of the stuff. And none of those are cheap or manufacturing in London, hmm. right? So it, and, and this great designer, the inspiration palette is massive. You can go from South to Jaffna to Candy to Gold. You have completely three different colors and three different cultures and hmm. three different varieties. So you, you, you have a huge palette and the history going up to thousands of years. So you can get those like, like historical uh, references and start building something like you, you can't do that in UK. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you for being on the show. Uh, it's been thank amazing you. knowing that uh, we have Sri Lankans making waves in other countries, working with cooler people, cool people and becoming cooler is always uh, definitely a good thing for us. Thank you so much for coming. Calvin. Thank you so much. Do they call you Calvin Kellin? No, no. It's more like... In Candy? When you were going to Dharmaraja College? No, it's more like Chintaka, Calvin Chintaka. They never said Calvin Kellin, Bella? <laughs> 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 On that note, we're wrapping up. We will see you soon. Till then, keep smiling. It's a wrap. Thank you.